Good evening, everyone, and welcome to uh, tonight's meeting. Today is Tuesday, June the 1st, 2021. Time is now 6 p.m. The uh, City Council meeting is, is the City Council of the City of Trinidad will now come to order in the City Council Chambers. We're also on Zoom for those of, uh, that are listening in tonight. So would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Mr. Bono, would you please yes, sir. in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Duvall. Now, tonight we have a relatively short agenda. It shouldn't take too long. Uh, let's get started. Have a roll call, please. Cabana? Here. Cato? Here. Creator? Here. Oh, here. Sue? Here. Williams. Rico? Here. Item two, approval of the agenda. Uh, council have any changes that they would like to make? Now I'll, enter, now I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Call vote, please. Yes. 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 Item three, policy item and staff reports. Mr. Valentine, anything to report from some policy items or staff? Nothing tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Petitions or communications or were written. I don't have anything that's been written into me. Is there anyone that is listening in tonight that uh, would like to speak, we'll give you five minutes. Seeing none, we will go on to item uh, five, consent, consent agenda approval. Item A, approval of the regular meeting minutes of May 18th, 2021. Item B, approval of the bills for $1,691,645.95. Approval of payroll uh, May the 29th, 2021 to June the 11th, 2021. In the amount of $396,875.45. I will entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Call vote, please. Corona? Yes. Pero? Yes. Pero? Yes. Oboche? Yes. Sue? Yes. Rico? Yes. Item 6, public hearings. We have none. Item 7, unfinished business. We have none. On item 8, miscellaneous business. Consideration of a three quarter inch extraterritorial water tap request filed by Joseph and Veronica Bodoin. Bodoin. At 13425 County Road 73.3. Could I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion. Mr. Hill, are you on with us tonight? Yes, I am. Give us some I have Mr. and Mrs. Joseph Veronica Goldwyn have requested three quarter inch extra territorial water tap to service an existing residence at 13425 County Road. 73.3, which is actually South Garcia. They have an existing cistern and have been hauling water since. Uh, upon approval by City Council, the boat winds will be required to pay $3,972 to include a plan investment fee, tap fee, plus all the necessary meter components. The water rights acquisition fee is not applicable since the property meets the one mile radius of the city limits. They do have an existing home on the property. They've been hauling water ever since they've been there. They have an existing septic system on site also. They just want to tap onto our city's main in order not to have to haul water anymore. Okay. Uh, any questions from council? Mr. Goodall? No, sir. Mr. Devon? Uh, no, sir. Okay, Ms. Quigle? No, sir. Mr. Shu? No. Ms. Ogletree? No questions. Yeah, I have no questions. Uh, call vote, please. 
Yes. 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 So moved. Second. Second. Discussion. Mr. Caro, are you on tonight? Mr. Caro? Mr. Valentine? Try star six to unmute if you can see. Yes, I'm here. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to purchase three vehicles, uh, three trucks, uh, one F-150, um, which would be the director of my, my truck. Um, I'd like to purchase a F-250 with a regular box on it, which would be the foreman's truck, and then another F-250 with a service body, which would be our service truck. Um, I'd probably be getting rid of one of the trucks on the department right now. It's a 2003 with 109,000 miles on it. Um, that one would be, uh, Mr. me and Mr. Valentine would um, determine where that one would be going. We'd either get it down to another department or auction that one off. Um, I'd like to put our welding truck. Um, we're using it right now for kind of an everyday truck, and we're putting a lot of miles on it. And that truck I'd kind of like to leave as a, a welder truck and use it on limited basis. Um, so that's why I'd like to purchase three trucks. Okay. Let's get any further questions from council, Mr. Goodall? I have none. Mr. Devon? No, sir. Mr. Bill? Good. Maybe it's not for Mr. Carroll, maybe for Mr. Valentine. But we, do we do a good job getting rid of the stuff that we don't use? Do we auction or salvage it, all those? We uh, we put them, all the ones that we don't pass down to other departments, we put them on gov deals and auction them off. Um, we've got a group out at uh, Noah's Ark right now that needs to be auctioned off. It's, I, I believe it's on the site now. Um, okay. So... Um, and that money goes right back into the fleet uh, replacement budget. Just for my information, for my education. So when you, so say you auction off a gas department vehicle, does it go back into the funds for the gas department, or does it go to a general? Historically, it goes into the general fund, into the fleet. Okay. Um, like Steve said, uh, we, we, would, we would determine whether we pass that on it's, uh, to maybe the parks, um, the street and bridge, if, if they need a truck. Um, they're decent trucks, but we're trying to get a you know replacement schedule going so that, that we're always uh, not nickel and then diamond the departments to death. So, yeah. Are we pretty good as far as updating? Total fleet, or we, uh, we are uh, with this uh, last year's 500,000 in fleet. We are within uh, a couple of vehicles of being upgraded totally. Okay. So, yeah, thank you. I just Mike, oh. this is Cheryl. Sorry to interrupt, yeah. but to answer the question, if Vehicles are sold out of a certain utility. The funds do go back into that utility. They do not go to the general. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Cheryl. Okay. <laughs> do you have another question? Do you know the website? GovDeals.com. Thank you, sir. You bet. Mr. Shu? No, no questions. I don't know if we should give Mikey a you know, one. He sits in an office down there all day, so I'm kind of going to the two. No, I have no questions. I have no questions. Uh, Mr. Corot, are these uh, vehicles complete? Do they have to have any additional equipment put on these vehicles? Uh, Mr. Mayor, 
two of them will need toolboxes on them, and all three will need uh, the hazard lights put on them. Estimated with the toolbox and the light, about a thousand dollars, and the light alone is about two hundred fifty dollars. Okay, so it's minimal. So that'll be the only additional things that, that the trucks will need. Okay. Thank you for the answer. Uh, any other questions? Call a vote, please. Serrano? Yes. Serrano? Yes. Correa? Yes. Bubble Tree? Yes. Chu? Yes. Rico? Yes. Item 8C, consideration of the Fox West Theater Rehabilitation Master Plan Proposal for Services Submitted by Urban Neighborhoods Trinidad LLC, CSNA Architects. Could I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion. Mr. Valentine, would that be you or would that be Ms. Clark? Uh, that the uh, new mayor and I believe uh, Stephanie Bakken may be online for uh, urban neighborhoods. But if council recalls, it's probably been six, eight months ago that we uh, applied to a, for a DOLA Ready grant uh, for matching funds to do the master plan for the uh, Fox Theater. Connected or something. That? Sorry. Are we froze? No. Did you lose us? Can you hear them? I think. You lost audio? <coughs> so, uh, I apologize. Oh. I'm sorry. See? <coughs> I think you guys were disconnected completely. You're not even on my screen anymore. Yeah. Oh, I have to show you the Right, right. Yeah. 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 Yeah
study or yes, something up yes, front before we move forward to actual funding. Uh, questions, Mr. Goodall. So will this matching come out of the fund we've set aside, Mike, already? Do we yes. have money in there for we the have, matching? Correct. All right. That's all I have, Mayor. Okay. Mr. DeBono? No, other than the, the purchase of the Fox building was made possible through what the uh, Colorado State Historical Fund. Correct. Uh, and the uh, yes. Colorado State Historical Fund and, and History Colorado, right? Was um, any of that money used? Any Was there any consideration in the preservation? The use uh, of that money? Um, so the, the purchase ooh, price was uh, $267,000. History of Colorado put in two hundred dollars put in the remainder. Um, there is a conservation easement on the exterior of the building so that uh, it, it's maintained. Um, and the plan is to preserve as much as possible. Um, I'm not sure if that answers your question um, yeah okay it's good you're not going to pass me by this. no <laughs> <laughs> um, this is probably a question for Cheryl on the source of funds on our proposal Cheryl it says CIP but Fox theater line item how much is that how much are we designating that Fox West Theater in this budget year. I'm sorry. That's okay. So I'm I'm here. Sorry, um, I just have to pull up a quick spreadsheet. Just a second. Okay. Um, it looks like, like, oh gosh, hang on. Okay. Cheryl, it's in the CIP. Um, we put it there for. So uh, it, it looks like we budgeted three hundred and sixteen thousand dollars for the Fox Theater, and that partial History Colorado and partial Bola, and then we budgeted another hundred and eight thousand for the Colorado Department of Public Health grant. So that's what's been budgeted so far, and then the grant amount we expect, um, gosh, there's a bunch of different grant amounts, but I believe $102,000 from History Colorado. I hope I'm correct on that. That's and correct. Then, I'm just trying to figure okay. out what kind of money we're working with. Right. Yeah. For and Cheryl, that, Cheryl, that 102000 and um is for the exterior rehabilitation and um, stabilization project from the state historical fund. That's what we received from the state historical fund. Okay, I have I have one more question. So, urban neighborhoods is providing the information. They're actually the contractor for this project, correct? The twenty-five thousand is going to be urban neighborhoods. Is going to do all this service. The scope of work is. Provided by urban neighborhoods, along with CSNA architects. Yes. Okay. Okay. I just have a question, Stephanie. You know, I know the city is paying uh, a finder's fee, for lack of better words, to urban neighborhoods for every grant that you get. When you're the recipient of this work, would you be willing to waive that finder fee when you're? you're getting the work from the city for that specific project? That is a better question for Dana, and I think Dana is on the line here. If you, Dana, can you unmute? There should be a button at the bottom left that will allow you to unmute. Um. I, I think that the question was uh, something about would we waive a, a fee yes. for the fundraising? No, no, no. Raise, waive the fee every time you, you work on a grant. You're 
when you're the recipient of the, that grant money directly. I can. Oh, see, yeah, uh, but no, no, I mean, we have payroll and, and we have expenses, and um, uh, I'm sorry, but I don't, uh, you know, I'm, I'm so far behind on this project that um, I, I'm personally not willing. I'm very it bringing it up with my staff, but I don't think that they they want to be waiving anything. Okay, just thought I'd ask the question. Council Person Greger, what, what, did, what do you mean by the um, finder's fee? Is that okay, the match? Well, is that I'm what you're sorry, that's, okay. that's bad terminology, but I'm for lack of a better phrase. So I know the city, you charge the city every time you get a grant for work on the FOX, correct? We'll, we'll, we'll often get grant administration fees or something, um, project, often project management fees. Okay, but if you're the pro if you're the contractor on the project, then it's double it's double fees, correct? No, that's the only way we're getting paid. There's no other source of income for urban neighborhoods. Okay. For the work that they do on the project. Okay. All righty. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And that's how they get their their funding. Mr. Shu, uh, Mikey, is this the same? Uh, we had talked about twenty-five thousand dollars for survey to do the bathrooms and stuff. Is that part of that? That is a different, different portion. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's all. I just kind of. I was just curious if that's what was part of it. Zogeldry. The only point that I, I wanted some clarification on was the, the highest line item on it is for task to existing conditions for $15,000. And then when you look at that, it's talking about work that's already been done, as far as I can tell. Are we paying in for work that's already been done, or is, this, or is there more work that has to be done concerning existing conditions? And I, uh, I know that the architect, Gregory Friesen, is on, and I'll let him talk about... Um, the existing condition, like the additional research and investigation that we need to do. Okay. Gregory, did you hear that? I did hear that, Stephanie. <clears throat> so the this is not work that would duplicate any study that has been completed to date. This is a existing condition survey as it's related to the specifics of preparing a uh, strategically inc incrementally implementable master plan. Okay. I understand that. That makes sense. I just was wondering because it was referring to work that had already been done. So, But I get what you're saying. So thank you. That's all I have. Thank you, ma'am. Any any other questions arise? No, sir. Okay. I have no questions. Uh, call the vote, please. Serrano? Yes. Goodo? Yes. Raimundo? Yes. Ogletree? Yes. Shu? Yes. Rico? Yes. Item D, consideration of... Um, Colorado Department of Transportation, Transportation, IGA for Trinidad Traffic Study. Uh, entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion, would that be you, Mr. Valentine, or would that be Mr. Just? Uh, that'd be me, Mayor, thank you. Um, so if you recall, um, a while back we put uh, $150,000 out of our marijuana funds for a traffic study. Um, I began putting out information and an RFP, and uh, CDOT offered to join in with uh, RPP funds, uh, regional priority projects. Um, I didn't uh, realize that they were, how much they were gonna give, and in discussion with them, they had 200,000 set aside. Um, they wanted to join the DOLA master plan that we were doing with the county, and, and it, it just 
didn't fit within that scope. That's more of a recreation activity, and we're looking for traffic study and uh, uh, interstate access and our exits. Um, and so uh, they they offered up to two hundred thousand. We've been back and forth, and this is the intergovernmental agreement required for that two hundred thousand dollars. And there's a lot of reporting done. Uh, in that regard, um, and we are currently a team is reviewing five uh, proposals for this traffic study, and, and um, they're pretty good proposals. So we'll come up with that soon. But this is just to for us to uh, have a memorandum of understanding in IGA with CDOT to move forward. Um, we're told by the contracting agent, uh, Mr. Don Scania, that he's never seen one move through so quickly um, and get approved funding. So, uh, <laughs> right on the list. We, we, <laughs> it had is, is is out there, and, and people are looking at it. So, um, I recommend approval. It's it's two hundred thousand. Okay. Good off. I mean, how can you argue with that? I mean, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mr. Bowen, questions? Other than Mike, I, I remember reading that all projects, I guess, that receive federal funds, they have to be identified with the, uh, the statewide transportation improvement program. Yes. This is through and the if, and, if you're, and if you're not consistent with the project that the city's working on, they can uh, take the funding from you, can't they? That's correct. Yep. They, they've given us guidelines for how we vet the right. consultants and everything. So we're, we're having to follow their guidelines. So where exactly are these impact studies going to be uh, exactly pinpointed? Um, so it's for our uh, walkability, bikeability, downtown traffic, and all the interstate exits, um, including Highway 12, connectability, we defined a split from basically east to west, north to south, however you orientate yourself, uh, with uh, the split of the railroad, the river, and I-25 kind of split us apart. And we, we're working toward making that connectivity. It's pretty pricey. I remember reading that some of the intersection traffic in, in, uh, impact studies can cost anywhere from 3500 to ten grand per intersection. That, uh, Depending if it's a multi-phase development. Right. So we have identified with our 150 match, their 200, we've got 350000 to work with. Yeah. Okay. Have no questions. Sure. No questions. So I'll go three. How much of this will, is the city going to have some input in to this ultimate plan? Because I think the last time we talked about this, I know there's a lot of concern in Trinidad about the status of our streets and, and whether the flow is going to be adequate for the tourists that are coming in and the new residents and all kinds of visitors. So are we going to have kind of public input sessions or is the city itself going to handle that or how will that work? No, uh, we'll have our own internal team, um, but they'll come to... Well, each proposal is different, um, but most everyone has three public meetings, one in the beginning to kind of see, one, you know, mid when they say, well, here's some, some possible options, and then one at the end before they submit a final plan. And all along, they'll be working with the city. There, there'll be um, council meetings involved in where they'll come, you know, for public input. So, yeah. Uh, Mr. Valentine, I was looking at it there. They list in there additional option costs and uh, new encumbrances. Uh, do you see that there will be some additional costs in those option costs or new encumbrances? Do you anticipate anything um, and what those might be? I, so through the CDOT rules and regulations, when you're doing a request for qualification, we're not allowed to look at the bottom line number on how much it costs. We're supposed to look strictly at qualifications and, and how they're 
they're coming across. Um, I think in talking to uh, uh, Gene, the CDOT engineer, that 350 will be enough, will, will come within budget. Um, as part of it, we're asking for concept designs and estimates so that we can plan future projects and, and we have cost estimates along, along those lines. Um, if that gets pretty uh, complicated, for instance, Main Street and Van Buren and Exit and how they connect and how they took away, you know, three legs of an exit over there and, and how that works. Design may be a little more uh, intensive in that. Um, but they will look at all of our, our city activities. If some of them already have uh, looked at it, have some concepts. Um, Cost-wise, I'm hoping it doesn't, but uh, CDOT also has means to, if it is cost more, we may be able to ask for more funds. Uh, and you know, what was interesting is that they are including all of the current exits, uh, plus the 13A and B, and to take a look at that, if there's anything that can be done. Yes. Uh, and is... According to this, we're supposed to start, are we supposed to select somebody by June the 15th because it has a start, estimated start date of June 15th, ending 1231? Yes, that's, that's what we put in our request for uh, qualifications uh, when we put out that, that ad. And they, that's, that's actually an attachment in here, what we, uh, what we submitted as a scope. And uh, that's, uh, we've received five proposals and we're vetting them. So um, are those it will, will we meet the June 15th deadline? Um, we were hoping to have it before council with the selection, but through all this process, it may be a little later. Okay, that was going to be my next question. Yeah. You just answered that. Uh, the other thing that's kind of interesting is that they're still including uh, exit 11 on some of the traffic study. I, I put that in there as the RFP, mostly, you know, CDOT's doing the X11, the roundabouts, but as they come out, they're also ending, entering our city street, Santa Fe Trail, and um, going the other way, Opal Drive and stuff, so just, um, I don't anticipate there'll be much added to that, but uh, possibly the friends rode up to uh, Fisher Peak. Okay. Got another question? Yeah, this something I uh, came to mind, Mike. Sure. Are they going to prioritize, like, highlight or mark the areas in town that are prioritized for problem areas? Or yes. Are they, there? that's included? That's there. included. Um, some of them are looking at it differently. Some are saying, well, we'll look at what you have existing and then try and fit what you believe is going to happen. Others are looking at, hey, we're going to have all this influx of people, you know, recreation, bikes and everything, and they're, they're going at it a different way. But, um, um, yeah, they're, they've already, some of them have said, well, Main Street, your right-of-way width is 60 foot and your curb-to-curb -curb is only 45. That's very narrow. And so they've, they've been in town or they can do magic off of Google, but they're they're really looking at it. So well, I'm really I'm really interested to see what the end proposal is going to be. Sure, we know that we do have some issues uh, with our streets and our traffic patterns. And so I'm really interested to see what their recommendations will be. Okay. Uh, any other questions, Crawford? Call the vote, please. Yes. Sena? Yes. Trejo? Yes. Father Trejo? Yes. Kiro? <coughs> yes. Rico? <coughs> On item 9, council reports. Uh,
also haven't had any meetings I attended, but I did have the pleasure of visiting with Chris from Johnson Controls as they were swapping out some of the readers on the gas, uh, on the, yeah, the electronics on the gas meters. Mm -hmm. It's very professional, doing a great job, easy to work with. He said, make sure I tell Mike. <laughs> <laughs> also, we've had... <laughs> <laughs> We've had an opportunity, me and Michelle, to ride our, our bikes through the Boulevard Edition. I just wanted to give kudos in the design, the drainage, the amount of water that comes through there, and how it stood up is amazing. So, just kudos again there. It was a great job. It looks great. I mean, you can tell there was a lot of water through there. But a, a great job in how that was put together in the design. That's all I have. Okay, Mr. DeBono. <coughs> Well, you and Rusty attended the uh, Fort Wooten breakfast, and you said it was pretty well received, yeah. even though the weather was pretty inclement mm -hmm. yesterday. Uh, other than that, uh, I've been mentioning on the radio just to let the residents and, uh, know that Steve memo, Steve Crow's memo has been voiced <laughs> on the radio about the gas meter replacement, and I've been promoting, again, Trinidad Lake uh, Resort. Monument Lake Resort, especially for the fishing tournament coming up this weekend. Yeah. Thank you for doing that. For getting the extra word out to this. Yeah. We're going to hear it a lot, too, so good job. Yeah, we're going to hear it a lot. Ms. Greedo. I have nothing. I had yeah. a meeting today and I just couldn't make it. Ms. Chu. The question. No, I just. <laughs> Don't have really a lot. I just want to kind of ask Mike a couple questions. On the uh, Noah's Ark, what uh, is going on up there? I kind of go by there a lot. It looks like one day they work, one day they ain't. Is there some issues going on up there or something to get that finished? Sure. There, uh, as a matter of fact, today we Bob asked for a meeting to get uh, finalized. But uh, I was in there Friday. Uh, they're doing the final painting. Uh, they've got the, all the floors, they've got an epoxy coating on, on the floors with some granular stuff. It's really nice. Um, that's technical term, granular stuff. But they have some issues with, uh, TJ's refrigeration is having issues getting a couple of elbows, big elbows, in um, COVID, they're having issues with uh, the door slabs. They got the frames in finally, but the, the doors themselves are they're coming in slowly. Um, they're, I, I believe, I'm sorry, I don't have it. I think they said they'd like to turn it over June 26th. That's what prompted the call for the meeting because they told us last time, you know, first week in June. So, um, but uh, uh, as it cost construction, us, as it cost us any more money, I mean, so far uh, we've, we've had, had a few change there. orders, but uh, over the last two months, I don't think so. Yeah. They have a trencher up there. They what are they trenching across there? Uh, that trencher, I believe, is going on govdeals.com. Uh, oh, that's a, that oh, yellow trench yeah, off to the side. Like they were doing something. Yeah. That's what she's, she's looking for. Right. <laughs> <Water. laughs> <Right. Yeah. laughs> uh, we actually went in there to save save some funds. A uh, couple of gentlemen from engineering and a uh, little mini excavator we got for trail building. We went in and installed uh, the drainage system, the roof uh, drainage. <laughs> Uh, off the gutters and buried that and got that done ourselves. So, yeah, that's that's good. Is there any way we can? I am. Um, Troy said anytime he's yeah. there, stop in. He would love for us yeah. to see yeah. it. He bugs me constantly because he's a tenant of mine from PBC. Okay. So he gives me an update almost every day. What's the date? Almost every day. Or in the approach, they just poured all the concrete out front and everything, right? That uh, was just, yeah, that was poured on Friday. Yeah, yeah just it, the other yeah, so it was. Uh, that's close. That's nice. It really is. So, yeah. see if we can't get you a 
tour. I just don't want to barge in. Yeah. Yeah. The doors have been like a three month delay. Yeah. It's just we got a few of them in. They're starting to trickle. Yeah. So I know that they're behind schedule. Yeah. Uh, so is that going to cost the contractor a daily charge that we have set in place? We've been hounding them pretty good about liquidated damages and. I, uh, we're pushing hard there, COVID-related stuff. I, I don't know if it'll go to litigation on that or not, but uh, we definitely, uh, if you know Troy, um, I've got him nervous. <laughs> it's like, you know, we've gone over a little bit already, so days. Yeah. So good. Uh, oh, that, yeah, I did. Well, I just wanted to tell you, the, the fish are a little bit bigger at Monty Lake. They're not quite as big as I want yet, but they are doing better. And it is nice up there. They're, they're doing a great job. I think we'll go buy a, a big fish and go look at other shore. But it is better. A lot nicer up there. And uh, there's been some of my buddies went up there, and they have a real compliment that it's really starting to look nice. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah, that was beautiful that we got to go see that. It is. They're doing a great job. Um, when I'm out doing my social civic engagement <laughs> in various uh, establishments, um, I'm often approached by people who have concerns about the city, and I had a wonderful chance to sit down with Mike and share a lot of those concerns, and I appreciate that I'm unable to be a conduit for people. Um, but one thing in particular that's come up that I thought I would mention, because I don't think we, we think about it enough, is that we do have a, a prohibited noise ordinance in Trinidad, and part of making Trinidad a good place to live for people is preventing a lot of um, unnecessary noise in the middle of the night. I know I live on Colorado, and it can be very loud in the middle of the night, um, but people are mentioning that, so I just wanted to put that out there that I don't think we're aware that we do have a, prohib a prohibition on noises that unreasonably inter interfere with the sleep, comfort, and repose of any individual are prohibited. I've heard for, from um, several people that their, their sleep is being interrupted by loud vehicles. Um, the other thing that I'm thinking that might be helpful at some point is for us to do a somewhat better job at getting out public information about what we're doing at the city because a lot of times controversies start from people working out of just not knowing what's going on and so I think that's something that not right now or anytime but maybe at a work session we could talk about looking at our website or how our public information um, gets out because I think it would help quell things and prevent things from becoming unnecessary controversies. You know, one of the things that I'm, I'm thinking of doing I've been thinking about this and it didn't happen last year but uh, it might be good, like from the farmer's market, and I was thinking of doing a tent out there maybe a couple of times and just say, ask the mayor, uh, and that way people will come in and just ask questions for, you know, what are you guys doing about the streets? What are you guys, you know, what's happening with Fisher Street? What's happening with Space Street? So I think, uh, so I may do that a couple of times this summer, uh, and I may invite a couple of the council people to, to be with me that day. That do morning. we have to hire you a body? <laughs> that's right. I'll, really, I'll show up. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I think that's ask the mayor nicely. I'll be nicely. Show up if you need some background. If I can interject, we've got a social media coordinator now who's yes. out there. That's her job. Yes. And she's been at it for I think two weeks now. So she's. We're trying to get the word out on. Um, on projects and everything that's going on, so working on that. Good. So, anything else? Nope, that's okay. it, thanks. Uh, I have quite a list here just uh, for everybody's information. Uh, the last time that we, uh, last week we talked about sponsoring that raise grant for the um, Southwest Chief Commission, and uh, we're actually having another meeting this next Friday, <coughs> and we offered to go ahead and sponsor it, but we may not have to. Uh, it just depends what we decide to do because uh, through the transportation bill that just ran through, uh, they, they're dedicating and we're waiting for it to go completely through. We may get $15 million uh, for that project. So 
but at the same time, we may decide to stay with it and still apply for it because then it will give us an additional funding for that. So that may be something that we're, we'll, we'll find that out on Friday. Uh, seven day service for the uh, Southwest Chief has been re implemented, so we're traveling now. Uh, one thing I want, I'm not sure if Debbie Wagner is on tonight, but I really want to thank her. Uh, that woman has really worked her butt off uh, this legislative session, uh, keeping us informed, keeping me informed, keeping track of these bills that have been so important to us here in Trinidad, and I'll mention a few of those. Um, and uh, the House Transportation <coughs> Bill, just to let you know, this goes back to the uh, Southwest Chief Commission. Commission. Uh, the House Transportation uh, uh, Bill number 260, uh, they allocated $2.5 million to our current commission. So, that in addition, this is for operation. Debbie is on. House Bill 1301. Uh, the canvas ability uh, to move outdoor plants indoors due to, to a secure location during inclement weather uh, is moving through the process, so I think that will help. There was a lot of concern of uh, how to protect their plants and in order for them to be able to move their plants, I think that was against regulations to move them inside, uh, so if they have the opportunity, they'll be able to move their plants inside to, to keep them from getting beat up is going to happen, so that's, uh, that's moving through the process. Uh, I talked to Les a little bit about this, uh, House Bill 1314, there's a, uh, it's a can another cannabis uh, on, on the amount of concentration in uh, cannabis. I think that's uh, another one that is making its way through the, you know, through the legislature. Uh, Senate Bill 238, uh, it's uh, had some amendments, some good amendments. Uh, it's on to, it has a second reading tomorrow, uh, that'll be happening. Uh, one of the things that they did, uh, a couple of things that did change, uh, the bonds sales, that was the language that was in there, uh, it used to say public or private the way they were sold. Now the way it reads is going to be and, so they'll have to be both whenever there's bonds sold on the public. Uh, they've also added a nine, an I-70 non-voting member to the, uh, there's going to be a total of 17 um, board members, so it's going to be on that uh, new district commission. Um, also, the tax and initiative will only will only pass through if two thirds of the district voting members uh, passes. So it'll have to be uh, apply approved by two thirds of the of the seventeen before it goes to a vote to the people. Uh, so that's what's going to happen there. Um, also, any eminent domain uh, shall be at that. I want the original language that said that it would be conducted in executive session and then afterwards in public, but now everything has, will have to be done in public, from what I understand. So that's uh, something that is good. Um, House Bill 1250, that's the Crime Prevention Bill. Uh, that has passed 28 to 7 in the Senate. It goes to the House, um, and then it'll go on to the governor, the governor for signature, so that's getting real close. House Bill 1162, the plastic bill, um, that seems to be moving as well through the legislature, and so it could be in the near future only paper products will be used to package at Safeway and some of these other places. So, uh, so that's the thing that I'd like to biodegradable. So that's something that's... Looks like it's going to happen. Uh, Does that include takeout? I believe so. Does there, it, yeah, there, is, there is language in there about styrofoam for takeout. <coughs> so they'll have to go back to the cardboard type yeah. things, which is actually a good thing to do. Yes, it is. The thing about it, they're still going to be like a 10 cent fee. Uh, I'm not sure about the. I know at the Safeway, at these places, it'll be a 10 cent fee if they, if they do a paper. Uh, I don't know if there's going to be a 10 cent fee like on the restaurants, additional. Some of them do that. So, we'll see. Uh, Fisher's Peak uh, Roots uh, meeting, we had a meeting last week. And as you all know, that a while back they were asking people to participate for uh, give input. Uh, they had about 100 participation. Uh, people participated in some of these uh, meetings. And uh, they all put out different information as to what. What they would like to see and what they'd like to do. Uh, 
last week, uh, Mike and I, of course, went to the SCED meeting, the first one. He was not able to attend the last meeting last week. Uh, Mike Ehrman and the other gentlemen were there. And what that is is they, they listed a, compiled a list of projects that we could apply for funding. Now, there are some that the city could apply for. There are some that the county will be able to apply for. There may be some that they, we could uh, jointly apply for. And uh, as a matter of fact, I gave Mike a list of some project sheets. Uh, we added one project to the list that we originally had. If you guys want to, Mike can send out what we've done so far, what projects we've initiated in that list. Uh, but we added one, and that is the, the river project tent that was not on that list. So there, we just find out that there's an awful lot of funding, and like Mike and I have discussed, is how do we wrap our wraps around, wrap our arms around all this funding that's coming down from the state and the federal government? So uh, that's the real tricky part. Tourism last week um, did not have a quorum, so they did not meet. And uh, Michael just mentioned this. I know we are we still on on track to probably have the work session next week on incentives. Is that something that we're still we're shooting for? Uh, yes. I'll let you talk about that. So. Uh, that is all I have. Uh, so, Mr. Valentine, do you want to go ahead and report? Sure. Um, I'll start with the, the incentives. Um, internally, we're working on that program. And, uh, we'll bring something forward to council. It'll be a good discussion. Um, the Southern Colorado Economic Development, SEDS, and SCED, and um, I've got senators emailing me um, with, uh, I apologize, congressional directed, congressionally directed uh, ARPA funds. So the senators are asking for projects. We've got to get projects to them by Friday, June 4th. Um, they're asking everyone in, in Colorado, so they're going to have a lot, but I think each senator, Senator Hickenlooper and Senator uh, Bennett, are, will have 10 projects, I believe. Um, I know that uh, Stephanie and Dana are on, and, and one of the projects they would like to put on there, of course, is the Fox Theater. Um, and that's for the full $17 million, dollars. Just seeing... Uh, yeah. Why not? Why, yeah, that's exactly Feel right. right. That's, so when I met with staff, we came up with a bunch, and, and I don't know how they're going to vet all these. Um, I'm not sure, you know, SCED is trying to help everyone to get these funds. Uh, the senators, there's uh, National League of Cities, CML is having a, uh, a workshop, a webinar, but uh, others, you know... <clears throat> The Fox Theater would be one of them, and then I've got a list of a wish list from staff, you know, everything from a new power substation, a welcome center slash convention center, a secondary water treatment plant, a center for outdoor recreation at the old waterworks building, the emergency operations center, a second gate station for for the gas, possibly replace three old water tanks. They're they're good now, but if they're going to be, you know, doing this, um, we even talked. You know, there's all this broadband. We talked uh, internet as a utility, doing our own fiber network. Um, of course, pedestrian bicycle trails, uh, city hall edition. We're we're crammed for space in here. <laughs> you know, um, State-of-the-art library, covered swimming pool. We also have, you know, some of the ones that we directed funds toward. Um, our wastewater treatment plant. It's, you know, still got a uh, possibility, but we're looking at that. These are kind of our long-term five-year goals. Um, extend utilities, uh, landfill expansion, uh, fire station on the east side of town, landfill equipment. Um, well, we'll take up the entire budget. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> so <laughs> I, the reason I'm, I'm doing all this is because you know the Central Park grandstands. That's part of our DOJ settlement. Um, tomorrow, with uh, with our staff, we're going to try and narrow this down. Uh, a new community center. Just I can keep going. The river project is in there. Uh, I know that we also included last year in the Simpsons Rest. All right, gondola. We've got a gondola to the state parks. <laughs> nice. <laughs> we've got a zip line from Fisher's <laughs> 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 But I just wanted to let council know that one for sure is going to be the Fox Theater that we're going to put out there. And we're going to, we're going to put together a list and send it to the senators and see what happens, you know, if, there's, if they can congressionally direct the funds uh, without having to go through that whole process. If you don't throw it at the wall, you won't know what's going to stick. <laughs> Mike, how is the situation at the landfill? You it's, uh, it's coming around. We uh, went out for a bit to clear and drop uh, the new... Uh, 35-acre, 40-acre tract that we purchased to uh, clear the bottom for dirt, so they should be starting, I think, maybe tomorrow, uh, to clear the ground and then get some... So you said by the end of July is when they're going to do their That's assessment. when they're going to, yes, but we're going to be done before that. Okay. Yes. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I also had a, a couple of meetings past when this came up. We are talking about the new equipment for that we we'll probably need for the landfill. Yes. And I had asked if you would get a cost estimate of what we may be looking at down the road. And did you? Uh, did, I, I, I relayed that to uh, Mr. Justin. I haven't got that. But that's, I didn't read that off the list. But that's on the list. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the landfill. And so, yes. Okay. You, you mentioned Fisher's Peak State Park a little bit ago. Last I seen or read, it was closed indefinitely. Do you know what the progress is on cleaning up the damage to the rain? Right. That's just, well, it, I just thought if you knew, it'd be nice to know. That's all right. We made any more progress on what we're going to do with paving the streets and patching up potholes? Yes, uh, Bob is on that. Um, he's assessing um, potholes. We're waiting on any plant to open. As soon as one opens, we have the one in Industrial Park, and then, of course, Walsenburg, Sand and Gravel up in Walsenburg. We'll start patching. We used our last coal mix um, last week. So uh, as far as paving, Bob and Danny are working on, the, and I've been in discussion with them. We won't be able to do what we used to do and just overlay streets. Uh, once you overlay a street, you have to do all the handicaps. So. Uh, the corners and everything. So we're we're doing an assessment, and uh, we're going to pick some of the worst street. And, and instead of doing, you know, a couple thousand feet of paving, we may be only do a couple hundred, but we'll get block by block. And, block. and roto milling is an option also. Yeah. If you roto mill. you still have to. You've changed the profile, and you still have to do the ADA. Improvements. Uh, Mr. Valentine, one of the streets that comes up and I've heard about, and I'm sure we all have, is San Pedro. And of course, because it's supposed to be on the, the brick, on the brick now, I was wondering, because I know by, I guess, with the history of Colorado or whatever it is that we were uh, tied into. Instead of doing the entire street in brick, can you do like maybe a section in brick and then the rest pavement and then a section in brick and so that it doesn't cost so much? That's, that's a possibility, I think. Um, we have to point. clear that because uh, I think it was back in like, 1973 when they named all our brick streets as part of the historic, uh, uh, it's in a resolution that we were supposed to maintain them. So, um, being that it's so far removed from you know the right. zone of town, yeah. Yeah, maybe they'll give us some yeah. leeway there to maybe do something like that. But get that street because it's like a roller coaster ride. Right? Yeah. Cool. You know, yes, it is. Uh, on Maple and Walnut, 
right there by the courthouse. Are they gonna when they repair that street? Are they gonna repair it with asphalt where it was asphalt? Or are they gonna repair it with brick? Um, what they're doing now is replacing what was there. That's how we did it now. Um, we do have kind of a concept on you know how those streets number one they don't line up with no. with each other from main up to first and then the streets widen out and right. um, we've got bumps <coughs> trying to figure out that um, that pavement is the old boulevard I guess right. I don't remember that but me either yeah it was. <laughs> It was always just pavement they took out the, the center islands there. Um, but they're going to patch it back for now once we get the water lines done. And you know, I think we, I think I mentioned this the last time, I think it's important that uh, the street, street and bridge department, anybody, uh, start now, if we possibly can, to start dressing up our community for the Santa Fe Trail days, that's a, right. yeah. so that we have a good show of our community. Does happen, so I think that would be good. Anything else, Mr. Valentine? Yeah, but Mike, are we gonna on, on the potholes and that? Are we gonna have our city crews do it? Or are we gonna have uh, uh, you know, bid it out for someone for the potholes? It'd be our city crews, uh, potholes and, and uh, utility cuts that have happened where we don't have payment. They've got a list, um, all the uh intersections where we've done the ADA improvements, that's uh, up to the city to patch back, so, um, yeah. Okay. Anything else? That's all I have, Mayor. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Down. Thank you, Mayor, Council Members. Speaking of the Central Park Grant Stands, it is my understanding that tomorrow is the Trinidad Triggers and Nogdoll Day. Very important legal matter that I know I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I know that because there were trigger players in the gym yeah. today and they were talking about tomorrow is the, uh, the, the season kickoff. The only other thing I, I wanted to mention is that um, a piece of legislation that I reported to you on previously was Senate Bill, because I know people don't get enough about talking about legislation, <laughs> but seriously, it was Senate Bill 2164, which is the, um, it was the uh, proposed legislation concerning criminalizing retaliation against an elected official, and it's not just retaliation, it's also a credible threat, threat sorry, act of harassment, or an act of harm or injury. That was signed by the governor on May 27th and is now law. I, I'm not sure of the effective date, but it is now law. So Thank you. any act of retaliation is a felony in the state of Colorado. So, and that, yeah. that also includes family members yeah, right. of right. elected officials right. also, right. not just elected officials. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it is law. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. <No. laughs> elected officials. Oh, yeah. Elected officials. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> Did I say city of the light? No. Mayor. Right, sorry. We lost audio again. Did we? Oh, wow. Sorry. I'm us. not sorry I'm kidding. Well, I think we're about done anyway. Yeah, that's all right. Anyway, Thank anything you. else? No, that's all I have. Thank you. Anything else from council? <coughs> Call for adjournment. Motion. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. So, this is going to She'll have to come do the roll call. Right. I'll, do is I'll give her the who was first and second. Yeah, on that yeah who made the motion in the second? I made the motion. Mr. Shoot seconded it. Okay. And I think everybody was in favor. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. I'm pretty that. sure that was the That was unanimous. Right. Right. This is Mr. Right. Shoot yeah. was the second. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Mercy. Everybody said yes. And everybody yes. said yes. 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 Yes.